Here we have the integral going from 0 to 1 of sine of square root of x, and if we use a calculator, we will get about 0 0.6023. And this is a very interesting integral, because when we use the midpoint rule and the Simpson's rule when n is equal to 4, we will see that the midpoint rule is actually better than the Simpson's rule. So first, let's do the computation so we can actually see the midpoint rule is actually better, and then we will talk about why after that. So let's get started. Perhaps let's do the delta x right here first. Of course, b minus a over n. b is 1, a is 0, and the n is 4 as we said it. So we have 0 0.25. Alright, here is our function, which is just sine of square root of x. And let's go ahead and just draw the number line right here, going from 0 to 1. Cut this into 4 pieces because n is equal to 4. So let's put it like this, this, and that. So for this right here, we know this is going to be 0 0.25, and then 0 0.5, and then 0 0.75. Good. OK, and 4 goes first. We will have delta x, which times f of, well, we will have to find the middle of this and that. So just pretty much divide this by 2, we get 0 0.125. So that will be the first x value that we plug in. And the next, we have f. And remember, the coefficients are just 1 for the midpoint rule. So the next x value will be this, which is going to be 0 0.375. And perhaps let's just finish the rest. 0 0.625 and then 0 0.875. You just pretty much start right here and just add 0.25 each every time. That's how I do it. But anyway, next x value, which is that, 0 0.375, and then we add f of 0 0.625, and then we add f of 0 0.875. Alright, so that's that. And if we use a calculator, we will get approximately 0 0.6092. So that's what we have. Now, let's look at the Simpsons rule. S4. And remember, when we use the Simpsons rule, n has to be an even number. Okay. So for the Simpsons rule, first we will have to do delta x divided by 3. So we will have n divided by 3. And then here we go. We'll be using this for the input. For the first one, the coefficient is just 1. So we look at f of 0. And then for the next term, the coefficient is 4. And we plug in this x value, which is 0 0.25. And the next, remember the coefficient is 4, 2, 4, 2, right? So the next one is 2. And then f, plug in the next x value, which is 0 0.5. And then, next one is going to be 4 again. f of next x value, which is 0 0.75. And then lastly, we have the last x value, which the coefficient is just 1. And we'll just put on f of 1. All right, so that's what we have. Again, use the calculator, we'll get approximately 0 0.5921. So now have a look. Which, right, which approximation is closer to the answer that we have right here? This one, huh? Right? If you do it carefully, it's actually this one. Right? Because this right here is uh, all of almost by 0 0.01 but this and that is very close like 0 0.007 ish right approximately speaking so in fact this right here it's actually better and I actually got this example myself too how did I do it in fact it was purely by coincidence well accident one day I was asking my calculus 2 class to do an integral right I wanted to have an integral that they can actually do it with integration by parts. And I also wanted to do it with the midpoint, the Simpson, and also the trapezoidal rule. Well, this one was a good one because you can actually do integration by parts after the substitution. And then for the other ones, okay, no big deal. But just like the previous video, you see this right here. If you differentiate, and I'm not going to draw the picture, let's just talk about the derivative right here. Let's just talk about f, right, f of x. We know this right here is sine of square root of x, 
when we differentiate this guy, we can see we get cosine of square root of x, but then use the Chengdu multiplied by the derivative inside, which is 1 over 2 square root of x. Right? So just like this. And you see that the first derivative, hmm, we have the square root of x on the bottom already, and the interval goes from 0 to 1. If we put 0 into here, you know the first derivative doesn't exist. If the first derivative doesn't exist, don't even think about other ones, right? And remember, the error bound formula, it's all about the derivatives. Right here, for the error bound formula, I'm just going to write this down real quick. Um, e m is less than or equal to k times b minus a to the third power over 24 n squared. But if you look at es, this right here is pretty crazy. This right here is less than or equal to k. Perhaps I use a different color for k for this one. k times, and uh, on the top here we have b minus a raised to the fifth power, okay? But over 180, and then on the bottom we have n to the fourth power. So you can see if n is a decent size, then usually, Usually, this right here is going to be much smaller than that, especially you see the 180 and also the uh, n to the fourth power on the bottom compared to that, right? But I will also have to remind you guys, this k here is the maximum of the absolute value of the second derivative on the interval that we care, which is from a to b. But this k here, it's actually the Abs the, the maximum of the absolute value of the fourth derivative. Oh my god. Yeah. On the interval that we care, which is again on A to B. In our case, from 0 to 1. And as you have seen right here already, if the first derivative doesn't exist, if you differentiate again and again and again, yeah, we are not going to have the second derivative, we are not going to have the fourth derivative. Therefore, these right here, they don't apply anymore. That's how we had a chance to have the midpoint rule beat the Simpsons rule. And that's exactly what happened. Pretty cool, huh? That's it.